Could Hurricane Florence be the next Hugo? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode of State of the Weather Address. I'm going to talk about the potential for Hurricane Florence, how strong it's going to be, where it's going to go, the track, and I'm going to show you a couple of key resources that you can use to track this hurricane along with me. So with that being said, let's get into this episode of State of the Weather Address. All right, and let's just crack right into the analysis here. This is the past track of Hurricane Florence. It started right out here, and it's meandered way north for a hurricane. It's gone really far north, and now just due east, and it's pretty strong for how far north it's gone. And it's going to continue to move east-northeast. Uh, so this is going to put parts of the southeastern United States um, under the gun here. This is the latest recon data from uh, the National Weather National Hurricane Center. These are the low pressures right here, 947, 43, 44, kind of bouncing around a lot, but pretty low overall. Wind speeds, generally 60 to 115 knots. So that's uh, pretty strong here. We're going to transition here into a Category 4. I mean, it's already one, but we're going to uh, continue to see that uh, strengthen a little bit as it gets towards the United States. Here's our uh, current... Infrared satellite for uh, the tropics. We got a system out here, one out here, one out here, and then we got Florence right here. So very active right now. And uh, this is uh, the the main show is Florence right now, and uh, it's moving east northeast towards the east coast of the United States. And I don't think the threat for the east coast is just going to be the hurricane. There's going to be something else within the hurricane that we got to watch out for, and I'll get into that in a second. This is the uh, latest infrared satellite imagery. Over the past 24 hours, the eye wall has extremely, you know, developed extremely well here. And uh, the hurricane is becoming more symmetrical. Thunderstorm is blowing up into it. Less wind shear to deal with. Everything is pointing to this thing beginning to explode right now. This is the uh, visible satellite starting to look a lot better you got storms developing on the eastern side that are getting sucked into this thing and uh, a pretty good eye wall and we'll look at the infrared too i mean you can see the thunderstorms even better here you can see those storms boom 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 starting to explode even some out here so looking pretty good higher pressure up here higher pressure over here you got the low down here that's going to go right in between it's going to track east northeastward. This is from Wisconsin, one of their uh, pages, and uh, they have category 444. I think they actually took that from the NHC. I'm not really sure, but uh, you know, there's pretty good agreement on that. And then uh, wind shear. This is something that uh, the hurricane was actually dealing with. Had a pocket of stronger wind shear to the east. It's made it through. Sometimes hurricanes will hit that and then they'll fall apart and just not quite be the same afterwards well it's made it through and it's strengthening there's a little bit of wind shear out here that's going to be you know something to watch but overall it's it's starting to weaken it's going to go towards uh, even weaker shear after that and so the improvements are uh, are helping this hurricane out this is mid-level shear this is a wider look it's going to kind of pass right in that area of weak shear right there and so this will help continue to strengthen the hurricane. This is a sounding ahead of the hurricane. That's the surface right here. This is way up high. And you want winds uh, to be relatively weak or the same direction, same speed. A little bit stronger up here. There's a little bit of shear ahead of it, but overall nothing uh, too uh, crazy here. This is a picture of uh, hurricane strength and uh, how the hurricanes look. Weaker hurricanes are kind of uh, over here. Stronger hurricanes are going to be over here. So you want a good strong eye wall, a good you know symmetrical look, spiral bands getting sucked in. And Hurricane Florence is definitely trending to a hurricane that looks like something over here. So it's looking uh, pretty good here. Uh, and so we're going to compare this to Irma last year. Irma was a Category 5. This is right, right, right around when it was you know a Category 5 here. And uh, yeah, Hurricane Florence, I mean, just over the past 24 hours, has gone from weak hurricane to a really strong one. 
and it's looking really good so yeah so this is uh the sea surface temperatures anomalies warmer than average out here where hurricane florence is headed so it's actually even more favorable than usual out there so that's something to watch these are the temperatures again hurricanes like warmer waters and it's going to be moving into warmer waters so that will also help it uh, continue to uh, increase a little bit so with all that said let's go right into the forecast we're going to look at the nhc this is what they have this is as of 11 a.m monday a little bit later than that now but hurricane florence right here major hurricane it's going to track east northeastward and hit the carolinas Again, it's going to be very close to the border here of South Carolina and North Carolina. Then what happens after? That's the big question. That's what I'm about to get into in a second here. That might be the biggest threat out of this hurricane. It may just stall out. And so we'll get into the chances of that in a second here. This is the time frame and the chances of gale force winds. This is when the gale force winds arrive. And about 100% chance right here. And that's going to happen around Wednesday at 8 p.m. That's when the gale force winds will arrive on the coast between Wednesday and Thursday here okay so yeah so after that uh, we got the uh, probability of wind speeds of uh, tropical force winds obviously that's near 100% uh, for uh, regions in North Carolina there and maybe even South Carolina all right now so how strong is this going to be you know what's it going to look like how much rain are we going to get? That's what we're going to talk about now with the models, the weather models. This is the GFS. This is a, a model, and you know you can find all these models. I'm about to show you at tropicaltidbits.com. They have really good weather models. Again, these are just models. They're not you know meant to be taken as actual permanent forecasts here. The National Hurricane Center you know takes care of that. So this is right now. This is Hurricane Florence right here. Low pressure system, just kind of sitting out there. And we're going to watch it as it moves uh, northeastward but something interesting to note here is you got a trough up here it's actually stayed relatively far north these troughs can screw these hurricanes up they can suck them in and it's stayed far enough north where it's probably not going to impact this at all we got a ridge out here you know some more you know ridging out there to watch here so we'll play it forward here and it's going to continue to build east northeast you can see some ridging building into the eastern United States and the Atlantic here. And uh, notice that there is nothing, you know, there's not really any jet stream anywhere near this thing. So that's something we're going to have to watch here. We'll play it forward here. This is, uh, this is going to be Thursday morning. And this is the GFS, and it has it hitting... I mean, it's just kind of stalling out there, looping around, but eventually hits uh, northeast North Carolina. But with it kind of just looping around or out there, that's uh, kind of concerning. The jet stream is pretty far north, so there's really nothing to take this hurricane and suck it in. What that means is it's just going to kind of stall out around here, which could bring astronomical rainfall amounts with it just sitting there like that. So that might be the end up being the number one concern here. So we'll continue to loop it, and this is all the way out to next Wednesday. So this hurricane just sits there for days, according to the GFS. We'll look at the uh, the wind speeds here. Let's see. Okay, we'll change views, and we'll look at the wind speeds for the southeastern United States as this thing you know approaches landfall. Here it is, right here, 947 low. Wind speeds well past 84 knots. So that's well over 100 miles an hour. And again, it kind of wobbles around according to the GFS, but then eventually slams into northeast uh, North Carolina. And pretty strong hurricane there. Yeah, that, that is a really strong low pressure center there, 902, 901. Yeah, it's going to be at least, least a Category 3, at least a Category 4 hurricane there. And winds well over 100 miles an hour, probably closer to 130 or so. So that's the GFS. Uh, how much does it show for precipitation? Well, let's uh, look at that real fast. We're going to fast forward this. Again, it kind of loops around and then eventually slams into northeast North Carolina. And that has over two feet of rain for that area. Now, 
again, it really depends on how long that sits there. But two over two feet of rain, yeah, that's going to be pretty crazy up there. We'll look at the euro real quickly. This is as of uh, Thursday morning. Here's the euro. It's got the hurricane right here, and it has it moving a little bit further south. Uh, you know, sometime on Thursday, probably tracks it right through here. So you had the GFS that kind of went out here, the European that went out here. And then we'll look at uh, the Japanese model. The Japanese model was probably developed more for hurricanes anyway, as that's the main threat, you know, that they get out in Japan. So it's definitely something to, to look at here. The Japanese model has it going through, you know, east central North Carolina as a pretty strong hurricane. So kind of in between those other two models we looked at. Then we'll look at one more model. This is called the HWRF model. And we'll look at this uh, zoomed in here. This is the infrared satellite projection by this model. And uh, this is not current, this is the forecast. And so we'll play this through. This is a very zoomed in view. And you can see that eye wall continues to grow, continues to strengthen. And uh, it has it moving through Southeast North Carolina. Okay, right here, boom. And it just kind of fizzles out, but just kind of stays around there. Look at the uh, radar, what the future radar could look like. Play it forward. Pretty impressive. You know, you can see those bands of thunderstorms every once in a while feeding in. Whoops. Feeding into the storm. And that could pose a little bit of a tornado threat. But again, I think the, you know, as we're, you know, that would be a little bit farther north if that does happen. If there is a tornado threat, it'd probably be in the northeast side of North Carolina. But this tracks it right through the southeast side, the eye wall. Again, your tornado threat's always gonna be on that right side of the hurricane. And then one more image here, one more map. This is the wind speeds. And we'll look at this in more detail. This goes all the way up to 160 knots or so here. And uh, this really blows up, this is around now, and continues to strengthen, 935, 940, this is the HRWF. I think this is more realistic than the GFS in terms of pressure. I think pressure, the GFS is going a little nuts on that. But 935 to 945 as it gets towards the coast, 110 to 100, maybe 30 or 40 knots of wind here. Probably, I would guess, 120, 130 when it hits landfall here. And, uh, yeah, it's going to go right through that area. And... Uh, the wind speeds will rapidly diminish, but the rainfall will not. So one other thing we'll look at here. These are the uh, spaghetti plots. This is all the models combined. And so this will give us a, a good idea of the model confidence, the model spread. And this can be found at cyclocane.com. So this is uh, right now, and this is going to, you know, as we get towards uh, Thursday, there's a little more inconsistency, but overall the models are in general good agreement. There's not much of a cone here. It's got it really targeting central North Carolina. I mean, if, if we look at all the models we looked at, plus these, yeah, it's looking uh, pretty concerning for uh, the central part of North Carolina. You know, Jacksonville, maybe all the way up to Washington, Fayetteville, Raleigh, those areas could see some heavy rain with Jacksonville seeing the heaviest uh, wind so that's what it's looking like right now so central North Carolina really all of North Carolina and even potentially South Carolina these are the areas that we're really gonna watch uh, for here this could be a historic hurricane so we'll have another video update probably on Tuesday or Wednesday as we get closer to this hurricane so look out for that and again uh, do the contest here. What state will the eye wall hit first? Put your comments below. One winner will receive an 8x12 print of this image. And uh, if you like videos like this and you want uh, more weather forecasts, weather tutorials for uh, big storm events across the United States and North America, go ahead and click subscribe. We'll be delivering more of these videos on a probably a bi-weekly basis, maybe even more frequently. So tutorials and forecasts uh, when you hit subscribe there. And uh, again, hit subscribe, and then we got some uh, weather model tutorials. So if you want to kind of learn more about those weather models, 
uh, and how I use them, you check out this video right here and that will uh, teach you how to use them. So with that said, hope you enjoyed uh, the forecast. Hope everyone stays safe. Uh, continue to uh, watch and monitor the latest forecasts and uh, have a good one.